Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how I use Procreate on the iPad to make my sources, my reference photos for my fine art paintings. So I use Procreate to create the paintings that you see here, basically as a reference and guide for when I actually start painting. First, I'm gonna to explain to you why I think it's important to create sources, but if you wanna skip that part and go straight to the tutorial, feel free to click the timestamp that I listed in the description below. If not, let me explain to you why I think it's so important to create sources before you even start your paintings. The first reason I think it is valuable to create sources before you even start your painting is because it helps you set up the proportions and the composition before you even start the painting, right? Because nothing sucks more than when you've started a painting and you realize the composition is completely off, like your subject matter is, you know, halfway off the canvas. <laughs> Just me? No. But when you're that far in the process, there's really no way to fix it except for to start over. And that sucks. So if you start by creating a source, you already know the composition before you even start the painting. So you're already setting yourself up for success, which I think is really, really important. Another reason I like to create sources is because it actually makes me really excited to start a painting when I already know in theory what the finished piece is going to to look like, right? Like you're not starting just with a blank canvas, confused about where to go slash if it's going to turn out. You actually have a guide and a finished idea of what it's going to look like when you're done. So it gives me way more confidence going into a piece when I already know what it's going to look like. And it's exciting. Along those same lines, I think it's really helpful too when I can create a source for my commission pieces. Clients really like to see what their piece is going to look like before I even start painting. It actually takes out like a lot of the risk involved when I'm creating commission pieces because we can start with a small deposit just to create the design of their painting on Procreate before I even start the painting. So if they end up hating it, we don't have to move forward, which takes so much of the risk out of creating commissions. And I think that's a really, really helpful tool as an artist who takes on commissions. And another thing is that when things start to get tricky in a painting, you know, probably about halfway through the process and you maybe are getting stuck, I think it helps having a source because you know what your finished piece is going to look like, right? So even though you're stuck and you're getting a little nervous about how it's going to turn out, you have that reference photo as a guide and it gives, at least it gives me a little bit more motivation and a desire to push through when things get hard because I know in theory what I'm working towards and it'll be worth the final push. <laughs> and the last reason I think it's really beneficial to have sources is because you can create a handful of sources, let's say five to 10, maybe even 20 sources that all look similar, that all have a similar aesthetic or color scheme or, you know, same similar imagery and with those sources you already know that you can create a full series of paintings and it gives you something to be really excited about when you see all those sources just laid out on your ipad you get excited because you dream of what it could look like when it actually is 10 20 finished paintings and that's how i've been able to develop a similar you know, aesthetic, similar style in a lot of my pieces is because I created all those sources at the same time. So they all have a similar aesthetic. They all have a similar way that I created them. So then when there are a series of paintings, it's the same thing, right? You get a full series that actually looks <laughs> like it is in the same series, looks like it has the same style. And that's really helpful as well. So before we get started, I do want to mention that I have an older iPad. This is a 2017 nine inch iPad. And I also have the first generation of the Apple Pencil. And the whole reason I say that is because I think it's important to know that you don't need the newest, fanciest equipment to make reference photos or use Procreate in general. These have done me justice for five years now, I guess maybe six years at this point. And they work great. Procreate is a $10 purchase if you don't already have the app. It is totally worth every penny of that because I've been using Procreate for over five years now and I've used it an infinite amount of times and only have paid that $10 once. And it's good for all sorts of things, not only creating reference photos for your paintings, but also for sketching, drawing, coloring in images, editing images, and I even used it for creating my logo for my website. So I highly recommend it for 
artists of all kinds, not just for making reference photos. So today I am going to be showing you how I created this source on my iPad for the painting you saw me sitting in front of earlier. So the first thing you're going to do obviously is open your Procreate app on your iPad. And what I like to do is go ahead and create a new canvas. So you'll hit the top right corner here, the little plus sign. And I like to create a new one. And I will usually create this canvas size, the same canvas size, canvas, canvas, canvas. I will create this, you know, digital size, the same size that my canvas is going to be. And you can easily do that on Procreate. You just change your dimensions down here from pixels to inches. You can also change it to centimeters or millimeters if you're creating a tiny piece, I guess. So let's say you're gonna be creating a painting that is 16 by 20 inches. So you'll go ahead and enter that in. It's 16 inches for the width and 20 inches for the height. And therefore your proposed, pro and therefore your proportions and the dimensions of your reference will be exactly the same size as your painting when you go to do your painting. And that's really helpful, obviously. <laughs> so you go ahead and hit create in the top right corner. And that opens up a nice blank canvas for you right there. On your blank canvas, the first thing I do is I add in a background image for my reference photo. So you go ahead and hit this little wrench in the top left corner. You get like add and you click insert a photo. I will collect these photos ahead of time. I like to collect photos from Pinterest, Pexels, and Upsplash. Um, anywhere really you can find copyright free imagery, I will collect those. Anything that inspires me or excites me, I'll collect all those in one spot. And then I will just go ahead and combine those pieces into a reference photo. So I collected these photos ahead of time. One of, this one is one of my favorites. It's a galaxy photo. And I'll go ahead and use my fingers to zoom in, make it larger, and just resize it to where I want it to go in the canvas. So you can easily do that with your fingers, make it bigger or smaller, and just kind of put it where you want to put it. So I believe I did it like that for this reference. And then, ooh, if you need to resize it slash move it, you just click this little arrow and it grabs it. So make sure it is filling out the entire canvas, no white spots. Then I'll go ahead and add in the next photo, which is gonna be of the woman. So I will go ahead and grab this woman and resize her to where I want her. Perfect. And I don't really worry about the editing until I have all the images in that I want. So I also inserted a picture of a jaguar, this one right here. And obviously it doesn't come together this easily when I'm creating it. I'm just kind of, you know, playing with things and moving things around until I decide where I want them to go in the end. And that's part of the fun part, right? Is the creativity and freedom you have with this app. So I have this Jaguar in and in the finished source that I'm showing you how I made it, I actually flipped this horizontally. So it's facing the opposite direction as the woman. So I went ahead and resized it, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. So you can go ahead and open the different layers that you've created by clicking this little squares on squares icon in the top right corner. And so you can click on your different layers and then because this woman is covering up the background, I wanna make her more transparent. So to change that, you can go ahead and hit this little N and it brings up either the opacity, which you can make things, you can basically make her more transparent or you can change the effect that she has on top of this background. So one of my favorites is either Lighten, which you can see what that looks like. You can barely see her face in the background there, which is kind of not ideal. But my favorite one to use is actually at the very bottom. It's called Luminosity. So you can play with all these different effects with your subject matter on top of your background and create different effects that you would want in your paintings. So let's try a different one. This one's called Color. That one does not look so good. <laughs> So like you said, like I said, you have to really play with the different effects and see which one is going to be something you like. So this one's called Linear Light, and that one's pretty cool as well. You get kind of like a hard contrast with that one. But like I said, my favorite one for my sources is using Luminosity. And I think that's really interesting. I'm actually just going to hide this layer, the Jaguar layer. And to do that, you can just hit this little check mark next to the end, and it goes away for now. But it's still there for when I need it later. I'm gonna work on this for a minute because I like the way she looks, but I still wanna be able to see my background. 
So I'll go up to the eraser icon, hit that, and use my Apple Pencil to erase some of that background so that I can see the background underneath. So I go ahead and just start erasing that out. That way I can still see the background and I get her as well. And now the color of her face, because of that effect, is similar to the background, which is good because then it'll look more cohesive as a painting later on. Okay, so now you can see the background and I'm liking the way that looks. And obviously you can kind of see like now it's starting to look more creative and it's starting to have more of my voice and what I like to create. So now I'll go back into my layers and turn back on that Jaguar layer. I'm gonna grab it and move it to where I want it. Grab your Jaguar layer and move it. Pretty sure I had it just about there. And now I'm gonna mess with the effects for the Jaguar. So once again, press that in and then lighten. That is pretty good. So yeah, now you can see the Jaguar alongside the woman, which is how I like it. And now I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And as you can tell, I'm messing with the composition and making it how I want it because with this app, you have all that freedom to you know, create the composition how you wanna make it. Okay, so let's say that I want to make this Jaguar a little bit more prominent. Like I don't like that I can see the ear behind the Jaguar's eye. So something that I like to do when things are a little too transparent, but I am liking the effects of the majority of it, I will go ahead into my layers. I'll go and swipe left, and then you can hit this duplicate icon, and it makes another layer of the exact same thing. I'll change the effect back to normal so that it's very prominent again. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that background. So now, because I have that, I can go ahead and erase parts of that so that I still get the background effect that I liked before. So I'm erasing the normal effect layer, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of erasing. I'm leaving the Jaguar's head very defined so that way when I go to paint it, I can see the details. But now I can't see her ear behind the Jaguar or through the Jaguar. So I can just erase parts that I want that effect to come through. Like through here, you can see the blueness of her face fading into the Jaguar, which I like, and I want to emanate that in my paintings. I'm going to erase part of it in his face, but not all of it, and just kind of erase most of his body because I really like the way you could see the red and different colors behind the Jaguar. So there's that. I think I want to erase part of her shoulder because I didn't have that in the original. So I select that layer, the layer of the lady, and erase her shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I had it in the original reference photo. And since I'm doing it quickly, it's kind of a mess, but that's okay. We'll kind of clean it up here real quick. Yeah, something like that. And then I erased part of the back end here. But you're getting the idea of it. Because this is just a reference, when you go to do your painting, you can change it however you want with the paintings. This is just a guide to help you know where you're going when you start your painting. So the last thing that I add, added with this source is a moon. So once again, I'll just go up to this little wrench and insert a photo. I like to use this full moon photo in a lot of my references lately. It's just a really pretty full moon. So once again, you can move your image anywhere you want on the canvas, play with the composition. And then I go ahead and change the effect. So I open up the layers, I hit this N, and I go ahead and change the effect. I like for the full moon just to go to lighten as my effect. And there I have it. And then I will go ahead and erase part of the background using my Apple Pencil. And my favorite erasing tool, if you don't know Procreate well, is in the eraser section you can change the brush. So I like to use the airbrushing section and soft brush as my erase because that makes a really nice soft transition when I'm erasing. And you can do like opaque, like full on opaque erasing or you can do like more soft, just like airbrushing erasing where you can still see parts of it. So that's what I use for erasing. So I go ahead and erase the background from my full moon just slightly. So there's still a glow around it. And I'll go ahead and grab that and you can tell that it's on top of the woman. I don't want it on top of the woman, I want it behind her. So I go ahead and hit layers, and you can drag, you go ahead and hold it with your finger, and drag it behind. 
I guess, underneath. Drag it down. If you drag it down, it'll be behind her. If you drag it up, it'll be in front of her. So I dragged it behind and now it's behind her. I'm gonna grab it and make it a little bit bigger. Kind of play with the composition here. Okay, and so yeah, it's a little bit messier than the original, but that is the basic idea of how I created this. And there's also other tools you can use when you're in Procreate. So you, if you wanted to draw on this, like let's say you're big into like doodling in your paintings or in your drawings, you can go ahead and hit the brush icon. And there's all these different kinds of brushes in Procreate. I won't go into that, but just to show you a little bit, you can go ahead and pick a kind of brush. I like this inking brush because it's the most like, I guess like a pen or a paint marker, which I like to use in my work. So click that and then you will, or you can change the colors. So up here, you hit this little circle. It opens up a whole range of colors. And I like to use hot pink, so I have that just lined up. And I go ahead and start drawing. And you can change the size of your pen here. And let's say you have everything laid out and you want to just experiment with what it would look like to have different line work in your paintings. You can do that as well. Or let's say you wanted to sketch something in to see if it would look good. You can do that too. So I'm just going to show you, like, let's say I wanted to do like some white. Whoa, that looks crazy. I'm going to add a new layer so it doesn't look crazy. Add a new layer and start drawing. So yeah, you can go ahead and draw on top of it like that. Like, let's say I wanted that in my painting. You could just play with it and do like some fun line work if you wanted. Okay, there's that option. I'm going to turn that layer off because that's actually not something I want. And now I have that completely gone. So there is one more thing that I like to show you that I like to use when I'm making sources. And that is changing the colors of the background. Because sometimes I have galaxy photos and I love the way they look, but I don't like the way the colors look with my subject. So you go ahead and select that layer. So I selected the layer of my background. And then you can hit this little like magic wand. It's like one over to the right of the wrench. Open that up. And then you can hit hue, saturation, and brightness. That's my favorite thing to mess with because it changes the colors, but it doesn't change the image. So you can just slide this hue bar around and it changes the background colors. So there's just so many different options you can play with, with your paintings. And I think that's one of the most fun parts because I am a huge fan of color. And so to have the different variations of color is such a treat. And you can just kind of move it around and see what you like best. I really like this like, yeah, like green and like hot pink. I'm gonna have to use that <laughs> in one of my paintings coming up. And so you can also change the saturation. So let's say you want it to be brighter. You just go ahead and slide that saturation way up and it's bright and you can, go way down if you like more of a muted color palette. And then in the brightness category, it's gonna be bright in a different way. So it's more like light shining at you. Or let's say you wanted to up the contrast, you would slide it to the left and then you have more contrast. So there's options with playing with that. And I, I really like playing with this tool if you're just not happy with the color palette and you wanna try something different. Once you're happy with your colors, you can just hit that wand again and then it is applied to your canvas. And then let's say you hate it when you're done. You're like, wait, I actually don't want to do that. You can just hit this back button and it undo, undoes. <laughs> it undoes everything that you just messed around with. So that's really helpful. So yeah, that is how I use Procreate to make my sources. And now that you have this resource for creating references, I think it opens up so many possibilities with your paintings because you can splice together any photos or imagery that inspires you, put it into an image that looks and feels good to you and inspires you and go ahead and make a painting from that. Like, I think it just opens up so much more freedom when painting, when you can see and develop something that's exciting before you even approach the canvas. For me, it's so nice to have that initial plan and guide when I start painting and it makes me more confident as an artist. My one thing I want to warn you against when creating reference photos is don't get too attached to your reference photo. Don't try to copy it exactly to a T because that can really actually hinder you instead of help you in the painting process because you have to remember these are computer generated images. You know, it's not going to be exactly like how you created it on Procreate and that's okay. That's kind of the point, right? Like you're creating a painting versus a computer generated image so let yourself be free let yourself be painterly when you create these paintings just let these references serve as a guide and don't let them limit you or make you too tense or tight when you're painting 
don't worry, it doesn't have to look exactly like the source. The source is just a guide. As you can see in my paintings, they're not exactly the same as the reference photos, but you get the same idea. And I just use that as a creative, you know, jumping off pad, launch pad to, you know, jumpstart my creative process and act as a guide. And another small warning about creating your own reference photos is make sure that you are taking photos for your sources from places that are copyright free. So there's pixels, there's unsplash or upsplash. I'll leave some links to some good copyright free imagery because you really don't want to be caught in a copyright scandal <laughs> related to your paintings. And I will say if you take images from Pinterest, which I often do, make sure that you change them just enough to make it into your own style and your own voice. Maybe change the colors or, you know, the contrast. Do something, anything you can to make the image your own. Therefore, it's different enough that you don't get any copyright scandals on your hands. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I hope it gives you a lot of inspiration when you go to create your new paintings. And I am hoping to launch a website coming in April full of original paintings for sale and prints for sale. So keep an eye out for that. And I do want to make a video showing you my entire portfolio from my time at Milan Art Institute, their mastery program. It's a, a whole handful of 20 paintings or so. And I'm excited to share those with you. They're all going to be in this similar style. And I'm so excited to share those with you. If you have any more questions about how I create paintings or how I create sources, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Like this video if it was helpful. And please subscribe if you want to see more of my artistic journey. I'm so excited to share it with you. And I am on my way to becoming a full-time artist. And it's really, really exciting. So thanks for following along with my journey. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>